During his visit to the U.S. this week, China's Vice President Xi Jinping has met protesters in Iowa and Washington D.C. In Los Angeles, where the leader is visiting today, protesters gathered downtown with signs that read "Stop killing Tibetans in Tibet" and "Shame on you, China." Xi Jinping's U.S. tour has reignited criticism of human rights issues, and within China, there has been a wave of protests targeting environmental problems. Citizens have brought attention to chemical plants, waste incinerators, and toxic spills. Although China's government tolerates more dissent today, environmental activists and NGOs face surveillance and a legal system that favors polluters. FSRN's Mike Ives has more from Dailan, China. It's late afternoon on a winter day in Dalian, a prosperous port city in northeastern China. Amid the bustle of traffic and street vendors, a Chinese activist in her mid-twenties taps on a laptop inside the brick-faced office of a local nonprofit organization. The office sits above a barber shop in a residential neighborhood. Reams of environmental magazines and pamphlets line a floor-to-ceiling bookshelf, and the air is cold enough to make you shiver. The activist won't give her name, fearing it could jeopardize her organization's work. But she agrees to discuss a protest against the Dalian chemical plant that gripped the world's attention last summer. For years, she says, Dalian residents had concerns about the risk of toxic spills in the city's industrial zone. After a tropical storm broke a dike near a paracyline chemical plant last August, many thought a spill was imminent. So they joined forces online and decided to hit the streets in protest. In the face of all of these problems that have been brought about by the overly rapid development of Dalian, people here finally reached a point when they couldn't take it anymore, and they set out to make their voices heard. On August 14th, an estimated 12,000 people marched through Dalian in a largely peaceful demonstration. The Associated Press reported, as a result, a city official promised to shut the controversial plant and move it farther away from the city's downtown. Industrial pollution by private and state-owned companies is widespread in China. Last month, in southern Guangxi Province, toxic waste containing the chemical cadmium was illegally released along a 190-mile stretch of a river, threatening downstream water supplies for millions of people. Ajans France Press. Reported that the spill prompted local officials to arrest seven executives from companies that allegedly caused the spill. Foreign companies also come under fire for sourcing products from Chinese factories accused of environmental and labor violations. Last October, executives from Apple met with environmentalists after a Beijing-based group accused the U.S. company's Chinese factories of improper waste disposal, a claim that Apple denied. I mean, many business, I mean, are private. Many people are no longer working for the governmental agencies. So they can say no to government.、Uh, in the past, Wen Bo is a leading Chinese environmental activist. He says after witnessing decades of breakneck economic growth, people across China are noticing contamination in their midst. Even those who don't have high environmental awareness, he says, are starting to take action against polluters. But Wen says environmental campaigning in China is limited by institutional barriers. Although the ruling Communist Party tolerates more dissent today than it did 12 to 15 years ago, it actively prevents Chinese NGOs from gaining too much power and influence. Even when residents and activists manage to sue, Wen says, courts often rule in favor of polluters. If there is a normal channel, the people would pursue this normal channel. But but in current、uh, society, in current situation in China, there is no such normal process. Mostly because the polluters are actually Uh, actually, actually, in bed with government, they are in bed with government officials. So, so they, so the government actually、uh, serve as the umbrella for many of these polluters,、uh, you know, as protection for them.、Uh, so, so there is、uh, no justice the people, the public can see. It's a weekday morning in Beijing, the sprawling Chinese capital. Although this city of about 20 million has modernized in a hurry over the last three decades, it still suffers from chronic air pollution. The past three decades, China has pretty much put all its energy into developing the economy. 
Tom Wang is the Beijing-based communications director for Greenpeace East Asia. He says environmental conflicts are especially acute in rural areas, and in contrast to city dwellers that stage peaceful demonstrations, farmers sometimes react violently to toxic hazards that threaten their health, land, and livelihoods. In the countryside, the direction is quite likely a very, you know,、um, let's say, dramatic eruption kind of thing, like a volcano. If、um, things don't get addressed immediately, really. Meanwhile, city dwellers across China wonder whether their demonstrations will help to stem industrial pollution in the medium and long term. In 2009, residents of the southern megacity Guangzhou protested a plan to build a waste incinerator, but Kamen Li, a 24-year-old Guangzhou resident, says city officials have decided to forge ahead with construction. Now, instead of protesting, Li and others are trying to ensure that the plant will be operated safely. We we kind of avoid the、uh, the harm of the insulation,、uh, but we we can reduce. Reduce the harm of the、uh, during the operation process. So,、uh, so, so the community's、uh, voices come comes out. It will help the government to to improve the operation of the insulator. In Dalian, the northeastern port city where residents staged a protest last summer, it's still unclear what will happen to that chemical plant they were worried about. Although city officials closed the plant in August and promised to relocate it farther away from downtown, the plant reopened a few months later. Now residents are holding their breath and waiting to see if the government will keep its word. Mike Ives, FSRN, Dalian, China.